you know how we're always like trying to find new ways to keep our brains, uh, you know, working well, especially as we uh, as we age. Mm. We'll get this today. We're going to do a deep dive into some fascinating research on methylene blue. Okay. Which is a substance that's been used safely for like over a century. Yeah. And might have some surprising potential for brain health. That's right. And I think what's really interesting um, is how it might be able to impact some of the key processes that we know decline with age. Okay. So we're talking about something beyond a simple dye here. Right. What makes methylene blue uh, so interesting when we're thinking about brain health? Well, one of the things that's really key here um, is it's potential to activate something called autophagy. Autophagy, okay. Yeah, so think of it like your cell's built-in recycling system. It's how our cells get rid of damaged proteins and other debris that can build up over time. So it's like taking out the trash. Exactly. I can see how that would be important. Yeah, and when this cleaning process doesn't work efficiently, that's when we start to see problems. And this is especially true when we think about the brain. That makes sense. So what does all of this have to do with methylene blue? So research suggests that methylene blue might actually be able to give this cellular cleaning process a boost. Okay. Potentially protecting neurons from damage. Um, there was a study back in 2013 by she and his colleagues that showed some promising results in this area. So it's like methylene blue could be flipping a switch on our cells recycling system. Yeah. Helping to keep uh, things clean and functioning better. That's the idea. And this is particularly interesting for researchers who are looking at conditions like Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. where this impaired autophagy is thought to play a role. That's really fascinating. It makes you wonder, like, what other potential this simple substance might have. And speaking of potential, I understand methylene blue might also have an impact on those tiny powerhouses within our cells. Yeah. The mitochondria. Right. Tell me more. So... Mitochondria are often referred to as like the powerhouses of our cells because they're responsible for producing the energy our cells need to function. And how does methylene blue fit into all of this? Does it give our mitochondria like a boost? You could say that. There's been research that's found that methylene blue could actually improve the way mitochondria function, making them more efficient at producing energy. Mm -hmm. um, one study uh, in 2017 by Duiku and his team found that methylene blue improved mitochondrial function and also reduced oxidative stress in diabetic rat hearts. Okay, so it's not just about cleaning up the cellular waste, but it's also about potentially optimizing the energy production within our cells as well. Precisely. And I think what's interesting here is this mitochondrial boost might have implications beyond just brain health. You know, we can be talking about things like heart health, metabolic disorders as well. You know, when I hear about boosting cellular energy, I immediately start to think about things like focus and memory. Like, how does that all you know work together? Um, is there a connection there with methylene blue? Yeah, you're on the right track. Uh, th there's been research looking into whether methylene blue might have a positive impact on cognitive function, particularly memory. Okay, so tell me more. Like, what kind of research are we talking about? Well, one study that comes to mind, uh, it was done in 2012 by Rojas and his team. And they actually found that low doses of methylene blue were associated with some improvements in cognitive performance and memory retention in the participants in that study. Wow, that's really interesting. So are we talking about a potential brain power booster here? Well, it's you know important to keep in mind that the research is still a bit early and more studies are definitely needed to fully understand um, you know, the potential benefits of methylene blue when we're talking about cognitive function. But these early findings are definitely promising, especially when we think about age-related cognitive decline, which is something that, you know, affects a lot of us as we get older. Right. Yeah, for sure. It's like you said earlier, it seems like methylene blue is targeting a lot of these areas that tend to change as we age. So it's pretty fascinating stuff. But I know we also need to talk about the other side of things here. We need to talk about safety. What do we know about the safety profile of methylene blue and what should people kind of keep in mind if they're considering methylene blue, you know, for themselves? Yeah, that's such a good point. It's really important to remember that anything, any substance that can affect our bodies can also have the potential for side effects. And methylene blue is no exception. So it's definitely not something to experiment with on your own. OK, so this isn't something you just go and pick up at the store, right? What are some things that people should be cautious about? Well, I think the first and most important thing is to always consult with your doctor before adding any new supplement, any new substance to your routine. That includes methylene blue and, you know, they can help you weigh the potential benefits and risks 
based on your individual health history, any other medications or supplements you might be taking. Right. That makes perfect sense. It's always best to have that conversation with your doctor, with a healthcare professional who knows your specific situation. Hmm. So are there any like specific risks or side effects associated with methylene blue that people should know about? Sure. One thing that people should be aware of is that methylene blue can actually temporarily change the color of your urine and stool to a blue or green color, which can be a little alarming if you're not expecting it. Oh, wow. I bet. Yeah. But it's important to know that that's a harmless side effect. Yeah. Um, on a more serious note, there is a risk of something called hemolysis in people with a genetic condition called G6PD deficiency. Hemolysis? G6PD deficiency, those sound kind of intimidating. Can you kind of break those down a little bit for us? Yeah, so essentially, hemolysis is the breakdown of red blood cells, right. which can lead to some health complications. Um, G6PD, it stands for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. It's an enzyme that helps protect red blood cells from damage. And people with G6PD deficiency, they have a shortage of this enzyme, making their red blood cells more vulnerable to damage from certain substances including methylene blue. Okay, so that's definitely something to be aware of. If you have that condition, if you have G6PD deficiency, methylene blue could be a problem. Exactly, and that goes back to why it's so important to have that conversation with your doctor. Makes sense. What about the source of methylene blue? Does it matter where people are getting it from? It absolutely does. You know, you yeah. don't want to be using industrial grade methylene blue. That's not meant for humans to be taking. Huh. Um, it's crucial to get methylene blue from reputable sources and look for products that are specifically labeled for medicinal use. Right. So quality and dosage are key here. Speaking of dosage, is more always better when it comes to methylene blue? That's a great question. And it's important to remember that when we're talking about you know, things that can affect our health, more isn't always better. The studies that we've been talking about have used relatively low doses of methylene blue, and higher doses could lead to some increased risks. So it's really essential to follow the guidance of your healthcare professional. Which goes back to it's so important to have your doctor involved in these decisions because they're the ones who can tell you, you know, what an appropriate dose is for you and your specific needs and also monitor for any potential issues. Exactly. And it's worth mentioning that research on methylene blue is ongoing. We're learning more all the time about its long-term effects and how it interacts with other medications and supplements. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of potential here, like you said, with methylene blue, but also a lot we're still learning, right? Right. It makes you wonder what this could all mean, you know, down the road for people. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I think it's just so fascinating that with methylene blue, it's making us rethink a substance that we thought we already knew, you yeah. know? It's really challenging us to think differently about what might be possible especially when we think about conditions like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, mm. where we know effective treatments are still pretty limited. Yeah, it's almost like we're discovering a hidden talent, right? And yeah. something that's been right in front of us this whole time. Exactly. And, you know, it just reminds us how important this kind of research is and how important it is to keep asking these questions and to keep exploring. Totally. You never know where that next breakthrough is going to come from, right? Exactly. So as we start to wrap up our deep dive here on methylene blue, um, what are some of the key takeaways you would want to leave with our listener today? Well, I think, you know, the biggest takeaway here is that while methylene blue does show a lot of promise, um, it's not a cure-all. And it's definitely, you know, going back to what we talked about before, not something to experiment with on your own. Right. Um, if you're interested in methylene blue and its potential, the best thing you can do is talk to your doctor, have that conversation, because they can really give you the best guidance for your own personal health journey. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's such an important reminder for everyone. For sure. You know, as fascinating as this research is, it's not a green light to just go and self-prescribe. Exactly. Exactly. And I think beyond methylene blue, even this just, you know, this whole conversation shows how important it is to be, you know, involved in your own health journey to understand the things that are going into your body and to advocate for yourself. Yeah. Knowledge is power, right? Exactly. Especially when it comes to our health. So to our amazing listener out there, thank you so much for joining us for this deep dive. Yes. Thank you. Keep asking those questions. Stay curious. And we will be back again soon with another deep dive on a brand new topic. See you next time. Until then, take care.